All right, so the the preparation of the comic uh, has happened so that we can start to um, actually save it to the pouch database. We haven't saved anything there. We've had to prepare the data. And this is also one of the big failure points in any sort of website or app. When you give the user the ability to do input, a lot could go wrong unless you clean up or you sanitize or you process that input. So that's why we had that function uh, to get the first word, to prep the name, and so forth. So if we do get, ultimately, uh, this temp comic, which we, which we have returned, um, we then saw it over here. Uh, we have a comic made out of the fields, and we saw it here. We saw it as an object or as one field and so forth. So based on that, we can start to actually store it in the PouchDB uh, database. So um, PouchDB is vaguely like local storage in that it can save this information more permanently than a variable. But uh, it's saved somewhere down deep in the bowels of the, of the uh, web browser or AKA your app writing on the device. So the next step after collecting the info, line 261, uh, is to start to put it into the database. So next lines, let's say db.put. Ultimately, that is the command. Let's put some data in the database. db is our shorthand for the database that we created up on the initialization function. And this takes a couple of arguments here. We have the data that we're trying to put in, which is a comic. Um, we have a comic. And the result is uh, either a success or a failure. On almost everything pouch related, there's going to be successfully completed the operation or failure completing the operation. So what follows is a function to deal with the success or the failure. We have either success or failure. So even with db, eventually we'll do db.get. We want to get something out of the database. That could be a successful extraction or a failure extraction. So we have to deal with it being successful or being a failure. So all of this ultimately is inside of the parentheses of dot put. So finally put the data into the database. deal with either the success or the failure result. These are objects that um, Pouch will give back to us, a success object, failure object. And if you read the documentation on PouchDB, sometimes they, they have it as success and result. This is what I had mentioned when we talked about Pouch the first time, I think, or the second time, or the second time. And I said, well, their documentation might call it result. I think it's more obvious to call it success because they do use, or um, you know, back and forth, success failure. So whatever we call these things, doesn't matter. But whoops, uh, these are actually backwards. Sorry, failure is first. It expects failure first and then success. So in the documentation, it might show failure, or then it might show result aka success or aka these can be called anything you want kitty cat that will work if you use those objects consistently through the code but the first one is the failure and then success
Well, we're going to have stuff happening between these curly braces, so I'm going to uh, break these curly braces out over here. And it might be good to add a note here because this will be several lines of code to deal with failure or success. Uh, we'll have uh, and dot put. Storing the data. Okay, so inside of um, this um, f uh, anonymous function, we're going to have if else to deal with dealing with either failure or success in attempting to put when put. So as we'll see, most of these operations in pouch will be either failure or success. So if it's a failure, do something, or else it's a success, so do something else. As usual here, when we're trying to test this, we can put some console output uh, saying, quotes, failure, space plus failure. This is an object that is given back to us, and most likely it has properties. It has properties of, well, what exactly failed? or What's the issue? So in our console, we're going to uh, output that object so that we can help test it and debug it. Conversely, under um, success, then it's the same sort of thing. Console log, we've got a success, space plus success. I'm putting a, um, a space here just for readability. Do you notice that? the word success, the space, and then whatever that is. Without that space, it'll kind of run together. So remember that even spaces in strings uh, are important. Failure is where we're going to deal with a lot of what possibilities of failures happen. Is, does the comic already exist? Did you already save it before? Or is there a comic that has almost the exact same name? So failure is going to be the one that takes more lines of code. Uh, this else of success is great. It, it, it worked. But we will also uh, do some changes on screen to let the person know, uh, for the moment at least, um, that because we prevented default, we we have that form <coughs> that does not um, clean itself out. The default behavior when you do a submit on a form, you get that refresh. The form cleans itself out. What we don't have, we prevent the default. So we'll have to also <laughs> clean that form out in addition to that success. So we will say. Uh, dollar L form our save comic form brackets zero the zero with example of that form dot reset method so if we have typed if the person typed everything that we're asking them to type and they clicked submit and it all went fine and dot put worked the form will reset itself 
we'll get some output in the console. Eventually, we'll also make pop-ups appear that said, comic was saved, or anything like that. Um, but for the moment, we can test this a bit in the, in the browser, or in your device, and uh, we'll see if it is saving, the, finally, the data that we are uh, creating. I'm going to save that and run it. Try it on my device first and then on the um, browser just to test things out. Okay, so it's loading up on my device. Um, okay, so I got to the home screen. I'm going to go to save. I'm going to save um, black cat number 12 from 2012. I'll click save. So my console, again, it's still seeing the stuff from before. And then eventually I see success dot put gave me a success and it did save an object to the database <clears throat> one way that I can trigger this failure as we will work with in a moment is if I try to save the exact same comic I just saved black cat 12 from 2012. I'm going to type the exact same thing again. Black Cat 12 from 2012. Save. The second time, I wish these would be time stamped, but the second time um, we're seeing here, okay, uh, the comic was black. Uh, BLA 12, 2012, etc., etc., and then failure. I get a failure with a bunch of extra uh, output. That's, that's me triggering both of these conditions. The success condition, right? A moment ago it said success, and it said object. You put the object in the database. Right now I'm trying to put the exact same object in the database, and that's a failure we will see that there is this sort of protection in PouchDB that you cannot save the exact same thing on top of itself. You could make an update of an existing record, and definitely we will do that. But let's say accidentally right now, I'm saving the exact same comic, and I don't want that. So my output there triggered the failure, and it says failure, and then status number and all of that. As we test this, um, in the simulator, for example, I can show you a couple of things here in the browser. Up until part two of the class, we were working in this project uh, as a plain old website, and we were looking at it in the browsers, Google Chrome, etc., and using the developer's tools there. And that worked up until this point when we moved over to Visual Studio. But as we see with Visual Studio, there might be some uh, some er sometimes when the, the, bug the debugging tools are wanting. So what we could do is to some degree debug back in the classic Chrome developers tools. Let me show you what happens here. If you remember we would press F12 in the browser. One thing to keep note is if we do uh, look at the Chrome developers console it does break the connection between Visual Studio and the the project. So I can no longer for example feed it in 
uh, simulation data like a, a map or capture other events but for testing purposes might be useful uh, so this would take us back to the console view these other things might also might not also work because they are required to run via Cordova so if I'm here and I try to do the whole sign up b at b.com uh, bb I don't think I've created a bb account yet bb join um, that's coming in great then um, <coughs> so sign in with bb bb well what I had done a moment ago on the on the uh, device doesn't come in here automatically because it's a different device one's a device one's the browser so let me do this again I'm going to save the spider <coughs> chronicles number 221 from 2018 17 we're not 2018 yet are we save So this happened after I did F12 and broke the connection between the web browser and Visual Studio. A moment ago when I was uh, testing it on the device, it worked. So it's not flawless to open up to use the console, although it could be very, very, very helpful. Let's see if this one in this case. Uh, put is undefined. Put is undefined because it didn't load up pouch.js. It doesn't understand what put is about. If I look at line 270 in my case here, that is the dot put. But dot put worked when it was running off of the device. So this is just some weirdness from trying to run an app in the web browser without Visual Studio connected to it. So, for testing purposes at this point, um, uh, this, this is not really fixable because this is assuming that the uh, PouchDB file is, is opening. <coughs> so if I go back and, and test it in the simulator, but keep it connected in the simulator, it should work. Let me confirm that. So, are you indicating that, for example, it will never work now that we're making calls to PouchDB in, in the browser? If we break the connection between the browser and Visual Studio, right now it's it's in debug mode. You see how it's got the stop the yeah. stop sign. As soon as I F12 here, that'll break the connection, okay. and then it seems that it won't then understand what Pouch is. Let me confirm right here. Okay, I'm still connected. Uh, I'm going to clean out my console. I'm going to do save. I'll do the same thing. Uh, what did I call it? The Spider Chronicles, number 212 from 2017. My save button is off my screen, but I should be able to press enter. Yes. So while the browser is still connected to Visual Studio, it understood what dot put was. When I pressed F12, it seemed to have then forgotten what pouch was. And then in my case also, my submit button is off the screen and I can't scroll down, but I pressed enter. So while I'm still connected to the browser in Visual Studio, it's behaving. Let me try now to do the same error I did on the device a moment ago. I'm going to save the exact same comic, which is Spider Chronicles 212 from 2017. Press enter, and then I get the error, failure. You're trying to save the exact same comic again. So debug-wise, it is it does seem to be useful sometimes. Uh, thanks for the reminder on that, Jet. It is useful at some times to F12 and kind of see what does what does Chrome see as an error. For a few people, that really helped. But unfortunately, the limitation is then the rest of the app doesn't quite seem to work because we need the connection between Visual Studio and the browser. So yeah, debugging, I, I do feel it's, it's not as good as it could be. But um, we've managed to figure out most people's issues. 
Um, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's really bad, though, if you have in a two uppercase, you don't capitalize the U in upper, and then it doesn't identify that as a method, a function that's not defined. That's like really showstopper kind of thing. If you can't use a Chrome or another a browser, another tool to debug, debug this with. Yeah, and I was looking into the uh, how useful if if those sorts of things are useful in the debug state of Visual Studio. Uh, I need to get back to you to see how fully it is. However, for example, like to uppercase here as I'm typing it, and if it's suggesting to uppercase, and if if I take the suggestion, there isn't that issue about uppercase or not. True. So yeah, it is. There's a lot. To kind of mull over what's the best solution. That's why ultimately, you know, the whole, even going back to like the whole idea of the class, ultimately it might be best, yeah, I'm going to just use Android Studio to create the Android app. But that's only the Android app. If I want to then reprogram my app for iOS, I then have to go learn Swift f and go work with Xcode. And all of that. So right now we're, we're like at the cusp of figuring it out about what's the best solution to reach all platforms. But is there not another tool that you can use this with for Dodo? Because Visual Studio not being identified those kinds of problems, that's a showstopper in my mind. I mean, it's not a reliable platform. You can't be scouring the code, interpreting the code yourself by looking at it, and trying to identify a misspelling or. A you know, typo of some sort and spend hours looking at the code to try to identify a simple problem that would be identified in Chrome Console in 10 seconds. Well, like I said, we're at a point that this is trying to be figured out. Everyone's trying to put their hat in the ring to figure out, you know, here's Microsoft's version. Um, there's other solutions, I'm sure. You know, doing more research, we could see who else has a possible solution. That would be another way because, I, I mean, I hope several people find it. They were scouring their code for the whole break time, couldn't find it, and put it in Chrome, just like that. Two seconds later, mm -hmm. you know, what the problem is. It well, I, well, I think that's why Chrome and the developer tools exist, because every IDE has the exact same problem with that. But it doesn't identify like, functions that are not really. I've used um, several ones for developing native yeah. for Android so and identify it. it. Some of them are specific to certain things. Remember, a lot of these IDs, people use them as kind of yeah, but these, these are like, yeah. these are basic kind of syntactical things that any interpreter should be able to catch and flag. Yeah, man, it's like, the popular the not because of the ID. Well, you know, I've used, I, I use IDs as well for developing native Android apps, and it, it always identifies Java issues immediately right there. I guess our problem is trying to use one language for a different purpose. You know, uh, you know, Java compiler will figure this out, or JavaScript and so forth. But uh, Tracy, what were you going to say? I mean, the other thing, if you didn't want to go into the browser, you could just copy the code and put it into the jslint.com yeah, and have it, you know, debug too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to get out of. Yeah. It's just got to be another way than, than what having to look at your code and look for every capital letter or every function being spelled correctly or whatever. Can we move forward? Oh, <laughs> yes. Sure. So um, if at this point we were able to put into uh, the database, what's happening here is we are storing this data that then we could retrieve and edit because the classic operations of a database are to save data, retrieve data, update data. So we have one of those four. We have put the data. We're going to then do retrieve the data, display the data, edit the data, all that good stuff. But as we're working right here, simply with dot put, as we saw, we have failure, we have success. So let's deal with these failure issues. I saw one, I showed you one example right now. One possible failure is that it's the exact same comic that you're saving. Well, with that, it could have been a mistake. Whoops, I am saving the exact same comic. Or it could have been the confluence of the, of the very, very similar name of another comic conflicting with another comic. So let's back up into the failure section right here.
in this failure area, here's where we can have another switch. This is the one that's going to help us deal with possible error messages. Now, I already closed it, but did you notice a moment ago when I had an error, when I forced a failure, in that response object, there was an error code number. So over on the PouchDB documentation, we've got a list of all of them, but here's a, a few common ones. There is the possible error code of 409, which is that you're trying to save a comic that is exactly the same as one that already exists. You're trying to save a document or a record into the database that already exists. So we have these uh, uh, cases that we'll deal with. Um, here we'll say uh, switch to deal with um, failure error codes. The object failure has the property uh, status. That's what we saw in the in the console. There was that JSON data that it gave back to us, that a uh, JavaScript object data, and one of them uh, was status colon and then a number, and then I think it said message colon and then another a real human readable message. So here we're checking what status code number did we trigger from a failure. So we've got again the skeleton here of case something and we're going to work with uh, only two of them. So then a case of B and then a default. <coughs> So switches are useful when you kind of have a known quantity of possibilities. We can go look them up at pouchdb.com. There's probably like five or so, but we'll start with these two. We have the case. One common case is a 409 error. So it's just a number, not a, not a string. So the failure object has a status property and it's 409 or possibly 412. 409 is 409 is that it is a duplicate of something that already exists. Specifically the ID. Remember everything in PouchDB is defined by its ID, that underscore ID is the unique property. ID already exists. is ID is empty. The other fields had been uh, filled in, but not ID, which actually we wouldn't really trip because we added the um, required attribute to to three of our fields in the form, didn't we? We asked for the title, the year, and the number of the comic as required. So we really probably shouldn't trigger this. But remember I said last time, you can't make anything foolproof because there's too many ingenious fools. So we might as well put in some of these possible cases to kind of figure out what's going on. Third case, uh, this is where I'm, I'm not sure which of the errors. It's so rare, perhaps, for debugging purposes, we could say uh, uh, unknown error. And we can actually say failure.status. That will then say 
what is that number, and then I can go look it up in the documentation. Now we, we will polish this, of course, um, uh, to give uh, pop-ups to the user. We will tell the user what went wrong, but for right now, for the testing purposes, as we're developing it step by step, we're giving ourselves some output for us to try to figure it out before it's ready for, for the public. Well, what's happening in this particular case is that the ID already exists. If the ID already exists, it's the, it's the possibility that it's the exact same comic or it is a comic with a similar name. <coughs> so we're going to um, have to decide that right here. We're going to have an if-else, basically. Is it, the exact, is it the exact same comic or is it one very similar? So after our console output here, We sort of have to check. Um, we have to check what has already been saved to compare. Is it really exactly what had been previously saved? So we need to do db dot get. So we're ultimately trying to put something into the database. But there's some conflict. The ID already exists. OK, so let's check that ID. Let's check out the rest of the fields if it is completely unique. So what we're trying to get is, is it get or get item? It is uh, db simply dot get. Get item is for local storage. But dot get, dot put, and dot get are specific to pouch. And get item, set item are specific to local storage. So what we're getting is a comic dot underscore ID. The pouch db get method asks us to provide a unique ID. Well, apparently, the ID that we're trying to save right now possibly might already be in the database. So let's get it to then confirm more of the uniqueness of what's being stored. The result of trying to do dot put dot get etc is again a an either a failure or or success uh, callback function. So the one up there was all about putting the data the one here but getting the data to confirm if it is unique or not seems the data is the same maybe so we retrieve the data existent to confirm It's exactly the same. Or a subtle, subtly, subtle, subtly, there's no spell check on this, or a subtly different um, comic. So it could be volume two of something. There's volume one, volume two, exact same names. But again, with that year that we're using, most likely we won't, you know, number one from 1961 versus number one from 1999. So, but again, this is to try to cover the bases about possibilities of, mis of, of errors to kind of um, figure it out. Again, uh, nothing is foolproof.
because we have uh, the possibility of failure or success. We're going to see this several times. We have failure, we have success. We have to deal with it with if, else. If failure, else success. So we're going to break that and say end dot get. Checking if same comic. So, what we've got inside of get right here is the, is the if-else statement dealing with either failure or success. So, with failure first. Now, usually when we do try to do dot, um, dot get, we have uh, that comic that does exist. So it shouldn't have a failure here. And um, yeah, just put that down for a moment. Yes. yes. So if the, um, yeah. <laughs> So the the dot get failure in this case uh, it didn't uh, it didn't exist. If we're trying to get something out of the database, a possibility of where where failure happened was it doesn't exist in the database. In this case, that shouldn't happen because we got down to already this part of the code. Uh, but we should still put in here a console output in case. You know, we're trying to debug this, so we'll say console log. We'll say uh, doesn't exist. And what is that uh, failure object to try to further debug? This one shouldn't really happen. Uh, again, in this case, this dot get failure shouldn't happen because we're this far deep into the first if um, case 409. We've already said ID already exists. If we're in the case of 409, the ID has to exist. So this is a very low possibility of this failure happening here. The good stuff will happen under else that it does exist. Uh, but then what else do we do with it? So here we can say console log. already exists but then we need to confirm success dot unique ID unique ID is that property of the object of the comic that we created remember under our function prep comic. Uh, we have underscore ID, which is the relatively short identifier. And then we have unique ID, which is the long identifier, the one with the full name, with no spaces, with the year of the comic, and all of that. 
Once we know that, if that is exactly the same, then we can um, tell the user, you're trying to save the exact same comic. Try again. Or it is different enough that we do need to save it, but with a different ID. Let's do this. ID already exists in the DB, in the database, comparing to what we're trying to save right now. The comic in the database has its unique ID, and the comic I'm trying to save right now has its own unique ID. And Pouch uh, treats that success object as the data in the database with its own particular uh, properties, and one of the properties is unique ID. So we're checking. Here's the unique ID of the data in the database. Here's the unique ID of the data I'm trying to save for us to further compare. Next line. Here's the part where we compare the two. These console logs are there, obviously, just for us to check as a developer in the, in the console, what are we dealing with? Is it really unique? But then the if else statement actually does something about it. So this is the end of comparing the existing data with uh, new data. The new data we're trying to store to the database. So what we're trying to check is what I had right up there. Is the, um, is the unique ID of the data already in the database, is that exactly the same as the unique ID of the data I'm trying to save right now? So here's our condition. If it's the exact same data already in the database, so exactly the same, if it's the exact same data in the database compared to what we're trying to save right now, then we will pop up to the user, you've already saved this. You know, it's the exact same data. Um, we'll do a simple alert. We could do a better uh, custom pop-up with, with Cordova, uh, the dialogue API, but for the moment, we'll just do a simple alert. Uh, saying you already saved this comic. So ultimately all of this rigmarole is to to do this, to tell the user you're already saving this data, this comic already exists. You see as us, the developer, we have to we have to figure that out. We have to do all of these loops and figuring it out. Is this the same as that? Is what's already in the database? the same as what they're trying to put in, then yes, tell the user this is the same comic. You've already saved it. <coughs> uh, 
when we compare both, and actually the unique ID is different enough, it is two different comics, but it could be for some reason, let's say there was a Superman number one from 1937, but one was from DC Comics and one was from Marvel Comics. Let's say they both published that exact same comic in the same year, number one, same title. There's that possibility. So, okay, what we need to do then is just arbitrarily add a little bit of uniqueness to one comic versus another comic, simply for storing it in the database. So, let's do VAR. We'll create here ID temp. We'll create a temporary different version of the ID in question. First, we'll start with a comic dot underscore ID, which is the one in question all along that we're trying to work with. Um, I just need the ID property of this data I'm trying to save, so store that temporarily, comma, then ID temp random. We're going to add, ultimately, to the ID uh, an extra random number so that it's different enough from the original. So we'll do math.round. I know we want to round this eventually. Up or down doesn't matter. We've done math seal before and math floor before. Here it doesn't matter. Rounding up or down, I just need a whole number. Math dot random arbitrarily 99 any random number between 0 and 99 so 100 possible numbers because then after we figure out that random number we will attach it to the temporary ID and use it as our unique identifier to save to the database comic dot underscore ID equal to the ID that we were going to use does conflict we confirmed it here does conflict so let's replace it we're assigning something to the ID of the current comic in question which is a duplicate so we're going to assign that random number ID temp plus ID temp random. And ultimately, that is what we're going to db.put, this new version of a comic. So when we would use someone else's app and it just works flawlessly and it tells me, oh, you already did that, that user already exists, stuff is happening behind the scenes that does all of this, that checks what has already been saved, and it deals with those possibilities. Are you trying to log in with the exact same user account, or would you like to create a new user account? Behind the scenes, what we're doing here is we've got the obvious part. You've already saved this comic via the unique identifiers. It's the exact same comic. So we're telling them it's the same comic. Behind the scenes, silently, I don't really think the user needs to know this, we put an extra number 22 at the end of the number, or an extra number 7, something that will then make that unique, that underscore ID, one or two digits different enough from the one that already exists that it can be stored in the database. 
and that's what we ultimately put. There is, of course, the possibility that someone is trying to make a change to an existing comic, but that is going to be addressed later when we actually get to the part about updating records in the database. Right now, it's still all about just saving the data to the database. So ultimately, here, we store a new, unique uh, comic with a new ID. With a new ID that has a couple of extra digits of a random number to be unique enough. To test this, you already saw that I saved uh, black cat number 212. I'm going to try to save exactly again. Black Cat 212 2017. You saw a couple of times that it would give me the error. If this works, this should let me save Black Cat 212. Uh, it should pop up and tell me it's the exact same comic. Um, it should trigger some of these things here. So let me check mine example. I'll mention another way to to test this. One moment, let me check mine. Let's see here. So Oh, uh, remind me in a moment. Uh, I'll also show you where can you see the raw data in your database. Let me show you that in a moment. But okay, I'm in the home screen. Save comic. Um, I'm gonna save. I guess the last one I did was the spider. Okay. Um, the spider number. 2.12.2017. Okay, so uh, the spider, the spider chronicles, 2.12.2017. Go down here and press enter. You already saved this comic. It is, it is showing that idea already exists. That's our part of the if else statement that shows the comic I'm trying to save is exactly the same as the comic already in the database. I get the pop-up that then said it already exists. Um, to, to test this another way, when we were creating the, right here, when we were on line 243, this created an ID that should be so unique that that result happens. If for whatever reason we couldn't use the year part of it, this would definitely be more instances where you would have a comic that does conflict. Spider-Man number one, 1963, versus Spider-Man number one, 1999. In that case, because I'm not saving the year, then that those IDs should be the same. SPI, SPI one, without the year. So if there was a need to do it like this, this should take care of it. Let me just show you that instance there. You don't have to change it. Let me just show you that instance to fully test it. Okay, so I'll do the Spider Chronicles again, 212, 2017. No pop-up that said it's the same comic because what happened is it created a version of the comic with some random number. To see this raw data, you have to look at it in the browser. So if you run it in the simulator, you, you then have to bring up the developer's console, F12, which does break the connection over with Visual Studio. 
But then we can look inside of application. And we had previously looked at local storage data stored. This is no longer local, st local storage data. This is index DV data. And you can see the database here. So in, in Chrome, F12, go to Applications, uh, <coughs> Index DB. Oh, look, there is the name of this database for this user. This database is ultimately based on their email address, prefix pouch. Opening that up, I can see the data in different ways. For example, by sequence, what I've saved so far into the database, the first object of data, there's the Spider Chronicles, number 212, the unique ID. The original ID was right there when I was requiring the, um, the year. The second item that I saved was also the Spider Chronicles 212, 2017. But then what happened was with the uh, random numbers, it will create a different oops it should create a different um, number Let me re simulate that Need to run it in the simulator again. In Spider Chronicles 212, 2017. And then, like I said, you can see the data in Chrome F12 switch to application by sequence. Oh, inside of index DB. There's the database and then view it in different ways. I think by sequence is the easiest way to view it. And then you see the data. You can refresh, you can delete. I would not quite delete objects this way, however. We will have a way to delete from the database in a better way. Uh, but one place to see the actual data that this browser is storing in the pouch database is through the application view of the developer's tools in, in Chrome. So here we have to do a lot to, to figure that out about um, does, is it unique, is it not, and then tell the user about it. Uh, later on we'll do some, nice, some nicer pop-ups that tell the user what's going on. But I think for the moment we can, we can end at this point and um, have a little lab time and see, see where we're at. So I'm going to save my work and put a copy of it in the folder and we'll uh, we'll do some lab time